Hello and welcome to this English lesson where we're going to talk about sad things. Um you could see from the face in my thumbnail uh I was trying to make sure I didn't look too happy because sad things are not enjoyable things to talk about but as you know I'm committed to doing English lessons on almost every topic under the sun. There are a few I might avoid but I think that when you're learning a language if you're going to learn about happy things like we did last week it's very important that we talk about sad things today. So, today's lesson will be about sad things. If you're wondering what types of sad things I'm going to talk about, I think I'm going to cover almost all of the sad things that you can think of. So, the first thing I wanna talk about is breaking up, getting dumped. So, these are things that happen when you are in a relationship with someone. Sometimes you are very interested romantically in another person and you start to date. In English, we say, oh, those two are dating. When you're dating, you go out once or twice a week or maybe more. You're probably texting each other all the time and you've decided, oh, sorry, just a sec. <clears throat> and you've decided that you aren't going to see other people. You are going to see each other exclusively. So, if someone in English says they're seeing someone, it means that they're dating. Um but sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes you end up breaking up. When you break up with someone, it's the point at which you decide to stop dating. But if you get dumped, it means that you probably wanted to keep dating but the other person didn't and so they decided that they didn't want to be in a relationship with you. So, breaking up and getting dumped are the same experience but slightly different. Let me explain it again. Two people who like each other romantically can decide to break up. They can mutually decide to break up but sometimes one person dumps the other person. They text them or they take them out and they say, I don't think it's going to work out and a classic line in English when you get dumped is, it's not you, it's me where the person who is dumping you takes the blame. It's kind of a curious and interesting thing but this can make so that this can make you really sad. When you are dumped or when you get dumped, you can be very, very sad. Not an enjoyable experience. Certainly not. I'm not gonna talk about my own experiences in life except I'll tell you this. Jen did not break up with me. Jen did not dump me and eventually we got engaged and we got married. The second thing that you can uh, have happen in your life that might make you sad. Sorry, just let me fix the hair here. Anyways, uh getting fired, losing your job. In English, we also say that you can be let go. So, when your work lets you go, it means you lose your job as well. This can be very sad especially if it's unexpected. Um if you go to work and you love your job and all of the sudden, the boss calls you into their office one day and says, we're letting you go and that would be your last day of work. When you're let go, it's not a very nice feeling. Um and again, we have three ways of describing this. You can say, I got fired. You can say, I lost my job or you can say, I was let go, okay? So, all three of those mean the same thing. It means you had a job and now you don't have a job anymore. Definitely something that can cause a lot of sadness especially if you can't find another job very quickly. It can be very, very hard uh, sometimes when you lose a job and then you can't find another job. Um a lot of these have to do with relationships. A lot of our sadness comes from how we relate to other people and sometimes distance or living far away can cause sadness. So, let's imagine that um you move to another country every summer for work and you're far away from home and you're far away from your family and you're far away from your friends. The distance can cause you to be sad, okay? Living far away can cause sadness. In Canada, we have many workers that come to Canada during the summer to work on various farms and other places and I think that for them, they enjoy the work but they are sad because they're far away from friends. They're far away from the city that they grew up in. 
they're far away from people that they love. So, distance or being far away or living far away can cause sadness. Um so, here's the big one. This is the one that I think causes the most sadness in life. So, I'll talk about this one for a bit. When someone you know dies. So, death can be very very sad or in almost all cases is sad. Even on the news when I hear a news story and they mention that people have died. It's sad for me. It's a sad time. Um but I do wanna talk about death just for a little bit because this subject isn't covered a lot in English lessons. So, when we talk about death in English, we have a few phrases. We say they passed away. Uh you can say that a family lost someone. So, let's say my friend's dad passed away. My friend's dad died. They might say that they had a loss in the family or they had a death in the family, okay? When someone dies in Canada, uh usually we have what's called a visitation. A visitation happens before the funeral. A visitation is when you go and you offer your condolences to the family who lost a loved one, okay? It's usually done at a funeral home or possibly a church or other place of worship. After that, there's usually another different uh event which is the funeral and the funeral is the day where the person is actually buried in the ground. Sometimes in Canada, people are cremated instead of being buried but certainly um death is a sad thing. I think I should do a whole lesson on death. It would not be an exciting topic but I think it might be an important topic for you to learn about. So, anyways, another sad thing is death and then I put funeral there as well. A funeral is what we would call the service that you have basically to celebrate the person's life. It sounds funny to use the word celebrate when talking about a death But when we have a funeral, we often do it to remember the person and to celebrate their life. Um let's move on. I don't enjoy talking about death very much but um certainly it is something that can cause a lot of sadness in the world. So, separation and divorce. So, you can see this couple is not very happy. Sometimes uh people are dating and they will break up but sometimes people will date And then they will eventually get married. And then maybe the marriage doesn't work out or we say things aren't working out. So, in English, you might hear people say something like, did you hear about uh, Joe and Sally? Their marriage isn't working out or things aren't working out and they are separated. So, separation is the first stage of when two people end their relationship. Um it's not the same as divorce. It comes before divorce. So, sometimes a married couple will be separated. So, you might hear, oh, Sally separated. Yeah, she's not with her husband anymore. Um and then after a certain amount of time, a separation might become a divorce. A divorce is the legal um I was gonna say dissolution of marriage. That's a big word, isn't it? But a divorce is when um a couple decides to go to the courts and to legally end their marriage. So, a separation is something that people choose to do and eventually a separation can lead to the legal situation of divorce, okay? Um but certainly something that causes sadness. Especially, it can be extremely sad for children. So, children in families where the parents are fighting or where the parents are separated or end up getting divorced. It can be a sad situation. Sometimes separation and divorce is actually good for everyone who's involved in a relationship that isn't working. Anyways, enough about divorce. I am spending a little bit extra time with each of these. Hopefully, that's okay with you. Um war. So, war just happens. I don't know what to say about war. I wish there were no wars but there are wars in the world. There is conflict in the world and inevitably war and conflict leads to injuries and death and loss. So, it's just a very sad situation when two countries can't get along and two countries end up going to war 
Um it's just a difficult and sad situation because a lot of younger people, usually people who are in the military are under the age of 30. Um I don't know that for a fact but usually there are a lot of young people involved in wars and there is usually a a loss of life and it's just not a very uh, good thing. It's a very sad thing. So, war is another one. Not getting along. So, I know I talked about separation and divorce. That's specific to people who are dating but you might not get along with a brother or sister. You might not get along with a friend. You might not get along with your parents. When you don't get along with someone, it means you're fighting all the time. Sorry, not with fists. You're arguing all the time. Not getting along can cause a lot of sadness. When I was a teenager, there was a time where I didn't get along with my parents. I was often fighting with my parents because they made lots of rules and I didn't like all the rules. So, not getting along with someone can certainly cause sadness. It can cause other emotions too. Many of the things I'm mentioning can also cause anger, uh sadness. They can you know every we are very emotional people um but not getting along with someone is not enjoyable. Maybe there's someone at work that you don't get along with. That can be uh, very sad as well. Accidents. So, not even talking about injuries or death from accidents but accidents of all kinds can cause sadness. Maybe you have just bumped into someone in the parking lot with your car and now your new car has a dent in it. Maybe you were in an accident and you hurt your arm and now your arm is in a cast. So, accidents can cause sadness because they change your life and they can cause injuries. So, certainly when you are out driving in your car, when you have an accident, it can cause sadness. Especially, I think if you have a brand new car and you get in an accident, um that wouldn't be very nice. And by the way, that's how we say it. We use the phrase to get in an accident. So, I could say my brother drives really fast. I think he's going to get in an accident someday or my sister um got in an accident yesterday. So, past tense, okay? So, that's the phrase we use when we talk about accidents. Terminal illness. So, a terminal illness is something like um late stage cancer. Um cancer is probably the best example of a terminal illness. A terminal illness is an illness where the doctors know you are going to die, okay? So, you might have someone say, did you hear about Joe? He has cancer and it's terminal. He has four months to live. So, a terminal illness is extremely sad because the person is so sick um, that the doctors can't help them and so they know that they are going to die very soon. So, a terminal illness is extremely sad. It's sad for the person but it's also sad for all of the family and friends who know that that person is going to die. Um I do wanna apologize a little bit for having such a sad lesson but this is a sad lesson but I think you are learning a lot of words and phrases that you can learn use in English to talk about these things. Um theft. So, earlier we had someone mention that perpetrators um are sometimes uh really annoying. I think Leo mentioned that. So, a perpetrator is someone who commits a crime. So, when you have a crime committed against you, okay? So, when when people do something like theft, we say they are committing a crime. When someone steals from you, when someone injures you, maybe someone attacks you, all of those things cause sadness. They cause you to be sad. Um so, theft certainly is one of the things. I have one small story about that. My first year of university, I went to the laundromat and I put all my clothes in the washing machine and then I put them in the dryer and then I went to the store beside to play a video game because you could put and when I came back, someone had stolen all of my pants. My jeans were gone. So, theft, I was sad. I was very sad that day. Theft is definitely something that can cause sadness. 
homesickness. So, I talked earlier about distance um and then being far away or living far away can cause homesickness. Um homesickness is when you miss home. Uh it can happen maybe you move to university and your first year you are homesick a lot. Maybe you are studying English in another country and you are homesick. You miss home. You miss the people. You miss your house. You miss your friends. Um people on vacation sometimes even get homesick. So, sometimes people go on a vacation for three or four weeks and sometime during the vacation they start to want they want to go home because they are homesick. So, definitely homesickness is something that can make you sad. Um and then just in general missing someone can make you sad. So, this is kind of the maybe the opposite of homesickness or the opposite of distance but sometimes when someone leaves your house or someone moves away, you will miss them. Oftentimes, people who are friends at university, after graduation, everyone moves to different parts of the country or different parts of the world and you might miss them. You might just really be sad because you miss them. So, again, when you miss someone, it means you are sad because the person isn't there anymore. You could also miss someone who has died. You can miss someone who has passed away. Um you can miss an ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend. So, maybe you were in a relationship and you broke up and you might miss your ex, your ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend but certainly missing someone can make you very, very sad. Uh when <laughs> here, this is a little bit lighter here. I think I'm into some of the lighter things. Um by lighter, I mean not as sad but when your team loses, that can certainly make you sad. Especially if your team loses um the championship game. Maybe your favorite football team or your favorite hockey team is about to win the the championship and they lose at the end. This can make people very, very sad. It makes people extremely happy when their team wins but it certainly can make you really sad when your team loses. Um let's see here. The next thing, when something breaks or wears out. So, I have seen many phones. I don't have my phone here. I have seen students at school drop their phones and then they look like this and that makes them very sad. When something breaks, it certainly makes people very sad especially if you we would say in English, if you do something dumb and then you drop it. Um I actually remember uh my son ordered a new phone and I brought it to him and I actually dropped it. It was a brand new phone. It didn't break but I dropped his phone. If it had broke, I would have been sad. He would have been sad. Um that would not have been a good thing. Um and then when something wears out, you'll notice I wear this a lot and I wear shirts like this a lot. I'm always sad when they get when they eventually get a hole in them when something that I like to wear wears out. So, when something wears out, it means it gets a hole in it or it stops working. Definitely, that makes me sad. I never, I don't like it when a a shirt that I like wears out. Uh let's see here. Um so, the weather can cause sadness. I actually like rainy days but cloudy days and if you have more than one cloudy day, if you have a lot of cloudy days in a row, So, if it's cloudy on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if the sun doesn't shine, it does make me sad. I do like a nice sunny day. Um I don't mind rainy days but when it's overcast or cloudy for many, many days in a row, that definitely can cause sadness. Um let's see where I'm at. Uh loneliness. So, loneliness, I talked about missing someone. I talked about living far away. But loneliness is when maybe you don't have a brother or sister you can talk to. Maybe you don't have someone that you're dating. Maybe you don't have friends and you are very, very lonely. So, loneliness can make people very sad. Being alone and not having people who you can talk to. So, certainly loneliness will cause sadness. I actually 
enjoy being alone but if I'm alone for too long, I get lonely and then I am sad. I do like being around people for sure. Um and then I think I mentioned this in another lesson. When you are old, if you have children, when you are older, when, once all of your children have moved out, we say that your nest is empty. You have an empty nest. So, a nest is something that birds make and they lay eggs and they have babies and the babies fly away. So, we use this word to talk about humans as well. In fact, older people whose children have moved out, we call them empty nesters. Jen's parents are empty nesters. My mom is an empty nester and you can be sad because if you have children, you have this crazy life full of noise and excitement and happiness and sadness like in my house with five children, there is always something happening. Happy or sad or exciting and then eventually, Jen and I will be empty nesters and we will not have children at home and that will be a sad thing for us, I think. So, a lot of the things that make people sad are from other people behaving in a way that isn't very nice and a broken promise is something that makes me very sad. It can also make you angry but if someone promises something and then they break their promise, so they say they're going to do something and then they don't do it or they say they're going to give you something and then they don't give it to you. When they break their promise, that can make you very, very sad. When two people get married, part of getting married is that you promise certain things to each other and sometimes in a marriage, people will break that promise. We also call that an oath. An oath is a very formal promise to someone but there can be simple things too like maybe if I promise my sister that I will meet her at 10 o'clock for coffee at a cafe and then I don't show up, that would make my sister sad because I broke my promise because I promised I would be there and then I didn't come. Um feeling left out. So, when you are somewhere like at school, at work, um when you're around large groups of people, you want to feel included. When you when you are included, you are part of the fun but when you are left out, you are not part of the fun. This can be very, very difficult for children especially. When you go to school, it's nice if you feel included. It's nice if all of the kids play together um but sometimes kids can be mean and they will they will decide they're not going to play with one of the other kids and we would say that kid is left out. So, when you are left out, it is a very sad feeling. I was growing up sometimes included, sometimes left out. Sometimes I just decided to do things on my own because I do like doing things on my own but the times in my life where I felt left out, I felt very, very sad. Um one time when I was a teenager, all of my friends went to a movie and I didn't find out until the next day and no one invited me and I felt really weird because these were my friends and why didn't they invite me? I felt left out and I certainly felt very, very sad. Uh losing something. Um this happens with children and adults but I put a teddy bear there uh because when children lose their toys, it makes them very, very sad. Um when you lose something as an adult, it can make you sad as well but usually it actually makes you angry with yourself. I lost my wallet once and that made me sad but it also made me angry but when I was a child, I remember there was a time when my sister lost her stuffed animal and she was very, very sad when she lost that stuffed animal. Uh failing. So, maybe you have taken an English test and maybe you didn't do very well. Maybe you are still in school and when you take tests, sometimes you fail the test. That can make you very sad especially if you study, study really hard. Um so, I see Omer asking, I wonder why my question has not been answered. Try to get through things as quick as possible, Omer. I think I'll get to it. Um yeah, I'll get to it in a bit, I think. We'll see. Um just patience, please. Uh sometimes when you take a test, you do well. 
and sometimes you fail <laughs> and that is not a good feeling. Um and then again, especially if you studied really hard, it can be really sad if you end up failing. So, just a few things here. A sad song can make you sad. A sad movie can make you sad. So, when we uh listen to music, sometimes we listen to songs that make us wanna dance. Sometimes we listen to songs that make us happy but there are also songs that make us sad and we don't mind listening to them. Uh so a sad song can make you sad or a sad movie. So we do use these words. We we say things like, oh, this this is a really sad song or did you see this movie? It was a really sad movie. It doesn't mean we don't watch them though. As humans, we don't always listen to things that make us happy or make us or watch things that make us happy. So, a sad song or a sad movie can definitely make you sad. Uh memories. So, in the last lesson, I talked about how photo albums, you know, a photo album is a book filled with pictures from your life can make you very, very happy but photos can also make you sad and memories can make you sad. I sometimes have this when I listen to music That's from my past. Like if I listen to music that I used to listen to when I was in my teenage years or in my 20s, it can make me sad because it brings back memories um, of a fun time in my life that's over. The older you get, you sometimes miss the days of your youth. So memories can make you sad. Memories of a person who is no longer Uh, with us. Someone who has passed away can make you very, very sad. So, definitely memories can make you sad as well. Um so, this is unique to the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere in the parts of the world that get good winter. In the winter, especially where I live in Canada, In November and December, the days get shorter and shorter. The sun rises later in the morning and the sun goes down earlier in the evening. In fact, at the end of the month of December, the days are so short that it's dark around 4 30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So, it gets dark really fast. Short days and being stuck inside during the winter can make people very, very sad. If you don't like cold weather, if you don't like going outside, you probably will be sad sometimes in the winter especially when the days are short um and the nights are long. Missing an event. So, we had someone mention earlier um one thing that makes them sad is they had to who was that that said they had to go to an event? Um I forget who that was. Sorry about that. Yes, Natalia. Hi, hello everybody. Today, I have a training at the same time as the lesson. So, missing something like one of my live streams or knowing that there's two things you need to go to and you can only go to one of them and you will miss the other one um can be sad. Now, notice this is different. I'm using the word missing in a different way than when you are missing someone. So, when I'm missing someone, That means that they're not here and I'm sad because they're not here but when I'm missing an event, it means I can't go to it. Laws and rules. So, I asked my kids, what makes you sad? And my my one, my daughter said, rules make me sad. Um so, I thought I should include laws and rules. Sometimes you might be sad because there are laws in your country that stop you from doing something that you want to do. Um or maybe you remember as a child that there were many, many rules in your house and those rules made you sad. When I was young, I had a friend who had to be home very, very early. He had a very early curfew and he was always sad because we were still doing things. We were still out and about and he always had to go home and that made him sad. Uh someone mentioned this earlier. Paying bills not having enough money um that can make you sad. I'm always sad um every time I have to pay a bill, I'm sad because I have to send money to someone else but it is really just part of life. Um you have bills, you need to pay the bills. So, you need to pay for heat. 
You need to pay for electricity. Uh, you need to pay for internet. There are many, many things that you have to pay for in life and it can make you sad because it makes you have less money. Now, they did do a study. I didn't talk about this last time but um they did a study on whether money allows people to be happy and what they discovered was this that not having enough money makes people sad. Having a certain amount of money does make people happy but once you get past a certain amount of money you don't get more happiness. So, and that amount of money is fairly high. It's more money than I make but when you have a certain amount of money in life, it can make you happy but when you have way more money than you need, it doesn't always make you happy but certainly not having enough money can make you sad. And then uh lack of money. So, I talked about bills and lack of money. Um lack of money simply means not having enough money. The word English word lack means to not have. So, when you have a lack of money, you don't have enough money. Um I think most people have a lack of money mostly because either they don't make enough or they spend too much. Um sometimes students I know at school have a lack of money because they spend all their money. It's not because their parents haven't given them money. It's not because they don't have a job. It's because they spend all their money. And this last one is from my, one of my children as well. Homework can make you sad. So, if you are in school and if your teacher gives you a lot of homework, that, that can certainly make you sad. I this one makes me laugh because I'm a teacher and I give homework and I wonder if for some of my students that creates a lot of sadness in their life but certainly if you have a lot of homework, that can make you sad. 